Hey there, comic book fans. I just felt like making a video today, so I pulled something interesting out of my collection to give it a look. And this is a Phil Suling from 1975, I do believe. Comic Con. I guess the creation of kind of Phil Suling Con. I didn't actually go to this. Um, I got this as a kid. I, I probably got it in 76 or 77 as part of a trade. Some guy I was trading comics with just threw this in because he didn't want it. And it's got a Stan Lee autograph there. At least I assume it's not a fake. <laughs> because why would anyone fake Stan Lee autographs in 1976 or 75? But um, I always liked this. I haven't pulled it out in a while, but as you can see here from the tape marks, it used to be taped together. There's no, the staples are gone. There's no staples in it whatsoever. I don't, I don't know who pulled the staples out. I don't remember if I taped it or not. Like I said, I got it. It was used. And, but I, I remember loving this as a kid because there's a lot of history in it. On the 35th anniversary of the first, first Marvel comic, how cool is that? That was not me who drew in it. I don't know why someone colored in one of Captain America's stripes and, I don't know, part of the Human Torch in blue. I guess it didn't have a red pen. But I thought this was very cool, you know, a little history of Marvel Comics. I mean, where, where could you get this in 1975, 1976, the Golden Age information? Wasn't a lot available. Little human Jack Frost, like I didn't even know any of this. I was new to Marvel Comics. Here we go, The Coming of Conan. This was uh, way back in the golden days of 1970. So this is written only five years after Conan started, but still, five years could be a long time in the world of comics, especially in those days. So here's a nice article on Conan. Who wrote to this? Say who? I don't even know if the writers are credited. Text copyright 1970 Dimensional Industries Incorporated, it says up there. But I don't, I don't think I had ever seen, I probably had never seen Conan number one before. Probably, this is my, probably the first time I ever saw that Barry Windsor Smith cover, I imagine. Because it's not like there are a lot of reprints of it running around in the mid to late 70s. All these cool little Conan covers. Like I said, I'd never seen these before. So it was very cool to be able to get to look at them. And read a little bit about Conan. Some ads. What's new from the old House of Idea? Let's see what's new. Marvel Classic Comics. I don't think I ever bought any of these. I, I didn't have much interest in classic comics. Uh, to, what else do we have here? Marvel makes it in the movies. Marvel movie premiere. Our first sensational film adaptation. Once again, nothing I cared about as a kid. Wizard of Oz, Amazing Spider-Man versus the Phantom Burglar. Oh, this was uh, the first newspaper strip they did. Once again, here we go. I don't, I don't think this. I think this is next. I don't think this is the one that ran in the paper. But how cool was this to find as a kid? A Spider-Man newspaper strip you never knew existed. I remember when the, the Spider-Man newspaper strip hit the newspapers. I used to read it. Some nice. Uh, John Romita artwork there. Let's see what else do we, what else is in here? Oh, I see some pictures in the back too. Artie Simic died. This may have been the first time I heard of Artie Simic. It, it probably made me aware of who Artie Simic and letterers were. But nice uh, Romita piece they used there in the Marvel manner. You know that once again they're telling us how great is this? They're telling us how comics are made. Uh, the Marvel method. Marvel comics are written in a manner different for those of other companies. Written plot first, then script. So here's um, a nice Gene Colan and Roy Thomas. How Tomb of Dracula is made. I'm, I don't know if I've scanned in or I'm scanning this whole book one of these days. Marvel trivia test. Craig Talbot to Captain America in the Hunts Back of Hollywood in the movie murders, 1940. 
Yeah, yeah. The, the trivia you have to have read 1941, 1954. This is some real trivia. <laughs> 1962. There's the answer key down there. Uh, here is our mighty Marvel bullpen people. Cheerful Chris Claremont. Glitzy Glennis Ween. Rascally Roy Thomas. Lots of people here. These are the people who worked behind... Pat, I think that's Patty Cockrum, isn't it? These are people who worked behind the scenes. Mary, Mary Mac McFerrin, she was there in the 90s when I worked there, so she's, she was still there. She worked... She was... Um, I think she was Tom DeFalco's assistant or secretary or something along those lines when I was there. Just more all behind the scenes people and some writers and things. Doubtful Danny Crespi. He, I worked with his daughter Sue Crespi at Marvel. She was he was a production manager at Marvel. His daughter Sue became production manager uh, production manager at Marvel. Sue is still there after twenty five years. Herb Trimpey, Jazzy Jim Salakrup, I worked with him. He was at Marvel in the 90s still as a as an editor. Let's see who else. Dave, Dave Cockrum, Doug Minch, Nifty Neil Adams, uh, Russ Heath got a, a drawing. Archie Goodwin. Wynn Mortimer. Oh, he was at Marvel? Who else? Sal Trapani gets a drawing. Klaus Jansen I knew from the 90s too. Jack Abel was Jack Abel was still working at Marvel, but he was um a proofreader then. He was an inker in these days, but he had a he had a uh, a stroke I think sometime in the 80s and Jim Shooter hooked him up with a staff job as a proofreader and that's where he stayed uh being a proofreader. Nice really nice guy. One of the he, he's kind of one of the um, people in comics who everybody knew also because he, wor he worked at Continuity Studios. So all the young guys in the 70s who started working in Continuity Studios were great friends of Jack, and he was like friends to almost everybody in the industry. He, 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 he was one of sort of the focal points of comics that everybody knew. Our pal, Sal Buscema. John Velogo Costanza. There's that comic book ad. I, that used to be every on the back of like uh, the price guide or something. Marvel at San Diego Comic Con 1974. Look at this. A portion of the Hardy Souls will manage to clip and paste all 100 Marvel value stamps. So every one of these people cut out a value stamp from Hulk 181. Roy Thomas. Shell Dorf. Shell Dorf, he was the guy who ran the convention, right? A couple more ads. Marvel, on the march. The mighty Marvel bullpen is not content to, rest, content to rest on its laurels. So in the next three pages, we proudly present our newest, grandest, and greatest creation. Satana, the devil's daughter. Skull, the slayer. The scarecrow. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's Satan. The tribe is the artist. I think that means it was jammed out. Probably, I think, by Continuity Studios. Steve Gann. I don't, I don't remember Steve. I have this Skull the Slayer comic. I just don't remember who Steve Gann is. So I think I said his name back here. I wonder... Oh, did I skip this page? Look at this. Some more uh, San Diego Comic-Con pictures. I think I somehow skipped over this page. There we go. Frederick and Brunner in a pensive move. Oh, Friedrich. That's, uh... Oh, the... Mike Friedrich, there we go. Richard Bunter, dedicated Marvel fan and chairman of the San Diego Comic Con. Oh, Charles Sch Schultz is there too. I guess that's Charles over there, right? Okay. The Buyer's Guide to Comic Fandom. I think that was the what the Comics Buyer's Guide was named first. That's right, I was flipping back here to see who Steve Gann was. If he told me... So it was just as drawn by Steve Gann, written by Marv Wolfman. The strip is so new that we don't even know what book it's going to be in yet. So keep watching. Wow. Dead of Night, number 11, the Scarecrow was in. Giant Size Dracula, Santana's daughter was in. There's the Scarecrow, drawn by Rico Rival. Written by Scott Edelman. 
Scott Edelman's picture was in here. I think he was on staff then. Where was he? There he is, Sparkling Scott Edelman, the writer on The Scarecrow. Marvel Checklist and Price List, they buy and sell comics. Robert Bell, didn't, wasn't that the name of the guy who sold comic book bags too? Wasn't he one of the first people? Oh, look, you can collect autographs. He's got no one's autograph but stands. Then the back, of course, is this comic, Salami, from Mr. Suling. Who? Pretty neat. Like I said, I've had this in my collection since I was a kid. I, there, I, I've talked about this before in my Friday night show. There used to be, like in my neighborhood in the in the suburb, sort of a um, a a kids network from from different streets and neighborhoods in the suburbs where you'd hear that someone was selling comic books. So you'd hop on your bike and you'd ride a few streets over and and you'd just, you know, there'd be kids out on the street and you'd say, we hear someone selling comic books over here in the street. And they'll go, oh yeah, that's Johnny up that up at number 18. So you'd walk up to number 18, you'd just knock on the front door and go, is Johnny here selling comics? And they, you know, their mother or sister or whoever would go, Johnny, some kids are here to see you. And you'd just go in and see what comics Johnny had and you'd buy them for a nickel or whatever. And or else you'd trade comics with them. That was the other thing. And, and and in one of the trades, the guy was like, "Here, you can have this. I don't want it. I'm throwing this in." It was like I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even have the, I couldn't even turn it down. He was just like, "This is yours. Take it." So I have had it ever since uh, 1976, 1977, somewhere around then. But uh, there you go. Thought you thought I'd give you a little look at it, and uh, we'll catch you later.